Hi everybody, I'm Scott with Starkey Family Fixing Rigging Up. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. And make sure you have your notifications turned on, that way you get notified when I put out a new video. Okay, this is going to be my weekly tool video here. I got another new air compressor. Now the previous video that you saw, I got a small air compressor for small jobs. Well, this air compressor is for larger jobs. Now, I did buy this through Northern Tool, and I will tell you about that a little adventure here shortly. But, uh, well, tell you what, let me go ahead and jump into it, and I'll go ahead and tell you uh, how this air tank is actually set up. By the way, on a pallet, this air compressor is six foot seven, okay? So, you need to make sure that your garage can accommodate the height of this air compressor, okay? Um, you will lose inches if you don't have it on pallet, but I would suggest making a small pallet and putting it on there, okay? That way, the vibration, you know, concrete, rusting on the bottom, it just works out a lot better. If you ever got to move it around, you can. So let me go ahead and go down the list and tell you all about this air compressor. Okay, so first off, I want to show you what the bottom looks like. You've got three legs on it, one in the back and two on the front. And as you see, I mounted it to a heavy-duty, durable pallet that did not come with the air compressor. It came shipped on a 48-inch pallet, which was way too big. And it was a lighter weight pallet, so... Over time, I just certainly would not trust it at all. Now, if you do decide to mount the air compressor onto the concrete, which, again, I would not suggest doing, it is only six foot one high, okay? Okay, so this is a model number SS5L5. This is a five horsepower, 230 volt, one phase, 60 gallon vertical air compressor. Now, I do want to let you know just ahead of time, when you have these shipped to your house, you're actually not going to get these shipped to your house. So, uh, <laughs> I just want to tell you that right off, and I will explain the whole situation in a moment after I tell you the rest of this. This air tank also is not shipped with any oil at all. So if you would hook it up and turn it on, it will lock up on you. Okay? So getting that out of the way. This draws 21.5 amps. So you need to have good wiring for this. I'm, I actually am going to be running all new wiring for this air compressor. In the meantime, I'm going to be using a jumper from my welder, for the electrical from my welder. Now, the shipping weight on this is 450 pounds. Okay, that's what they're estimating. Now, when I got this on the back of a semi-trailer, the way that this thing was put up, I didn't like it too well. You would think that they would ship this in a crate. They did not. It was bolted to a cheesy pallet. 48 inch pallet and it just had plastic you know cooked to it you cut the plastic is off so there's no protection whatsoever there okay so that did not make me very happy now like I said before this is a 60 gallon tank it's five horsepower it's at uh, 230 volts it is a stage one it's 18.1 CFM of airflow at 90 pounds um, it goes up to 135 pounds maximum air pressure let's see here the motor RP rpms is 3450 it's rated at four minutes and 45 seconds to the time that you turn it on to the time that the air tank is full is it? I don't know. We'll try that out later, I guess. Now, this is rated for over 5,000 hours. A lot of people don't realize air compressors do have a rating on them. Now, that can be higher and that can be lower. It depends on if you change your oil and take care of it 
or if you don't. Now the noise level, the decimal level is 78. So it's going to be fairly loud. And like I said, it does take oil. Um, let's see here. Anything else that we need to talk about on here? Probably not. Uh, duty cycle on this. You can run this continuous. Okay, that's what, what this is actually set up for. So if you were going to do like a small paint shop or something like that, and you were using air to actually blow, you know, paint on a car, you could use this com air compressor continuously and not have one bit of problems at all. Okay, now I talked about the oil. You don't want to just put any type of oil in this. And here's the reason why. And you want to make sure you do this at the time of when you buy your air compressor. No matter if you go through Northern Tool, Tractor Supply, or whoever else sells these. This right here, if you can see this, this right here is your oil kit that comes with your air filter, your oil. This right here ex automatically extends your warranty an extra year. Okay? So you get one year when you buy the air compressor. If you have this on your sales receipt, you automatically get one more year. This is a brand that they recommend. This is synthetic, and we will open this up later, and I'll show you what's actually in here. Okay, so now on the downside, we're talking money for this air compressor. Well, that oil kit that I just showed you, it's very, very pricey. It's $117. Now, yes, you can go out and buy oil elsewhere. You can buy something else. But if you end up having a problem with this, you're out of luck because you didn't use the right oil in it. Now, the next thing is on here that I do want to tell you, this is a cast iron motor, okay? The pump and everything like that. I would suggest if you are shopping for an air compressor, a larger one anyways, get a cast iron and not a cast aluminum. I have actually had several friends that have got the cast aluminum and they ran them too long and there was like a major meltdown. And they were just out of luck afterwards. You really don't have a lot of problems with the cast iron. The cast iron air compressors are the ones that you normally find years down the road. I mean years and years and years. Normally you really don't have problems with that. <clears throat> I know you have problems with everything nowadays. But, well, I think I would rather go with the... What's well, actually proven the time over many air compressors versus the aluminum. Now, I ended up paying, let me see here, the air compressor was $1,349, which is rather pricey. But to get something that I can use on, like, my semi truck, for example, to take lug nuts off and other stubborn bolts and things like that. I actually needed one that was larger, okay? So, I ended up using a promo code from Honey, of all places, and I did get a whopping $20 off, so just keep that in mind. <laughs> the total on the order after tax, and I did, I did pay extra for a lift gate, which I feel like I got kind of ripped on that, but and I'll explain to that, I'll explain you about that here in a minute too. But uh, it was $1,643.05 altogether for this air compressor. Now, keep in mind, when you do order an air compressor, this is all you get. You don't get any type of air fittings. You don't get no electrical cord. you got to come up with all that yourself. So, by the time you get your fittings coming out, you buy an airline... You buy electrical wire to go in here, and depending how far you have to run it from your fuse box to here, you're still looking at maybe anywhere from maybe $150, maybe even $200 more after you buy the air compressor if you need to go through and buy the extra equipment. 
Now I want to talk about the shipping on this. Okay. Everything that could have went wrong absolutely went wrong on the shipping on this air compressor. Okay. I'm not going to mention the trucking company because it's not their fault. Okay. Northern Troll contracted a comp or a trucking company that had a 53 foot van trailer. Okay. To deliver this to my home. Now, I don't know about you, but most homes are not designed, their driveways are not designed to have a 53 foot trailer going up their driveway. Okay. Now, I can bring my truck home, but my trailer will not fit up the driveway. And it's a flatbed. Okay. Let, and you take in consideration a van trailer. Okay. Now, I paid for a lift gate service. So, you know, I assumed that the truck that they would actually contract to bring this to my home, you know, the shipping address, would be something similar to, you know, when you would buy a washer, dryer, something like that from any normal company like Lowe's and Sears and, you know, Menards or whatever. This company absolutely, in my opinion, has no idea what they are doing on the shipping, okay? And I made that clear to the person that I talked to on the phone several times. I told them they needed to find a new job because they had no idea what they were doing. And that is, honestly, you know, you've, you all have watched my videos and I tell it how, the way it is. Most of the time, I don't have the problems. This one here, I had the problems. So, I ordered the air compressor, and it took two weeks to actually, over two weeks to get to me. Okay, which that's fine. But knowing that this air compressor, the trucking company called me up, and it had been uh, sent to their trucking company, and the trucking company is not too awful far from my home. Maybe, I don't know, maybe within 100 miles. Um... It was sitting at the truck company for a week and a half because they were trying to figure out how to get this to me. Now, Northern Toll, their bright idea was, now keep in mind, this was listed with free shipping. Okay? I paid $85 extra for a lift gate fee, meaning the truck was going to bring it up to my house and the lift gate, which is a gate on the back of the trailer, would lower the air compressor down, okay? Now keep in mind, I am in trucking and I understand how this stuff works. But it, it just did not happen. It absolutely did not happen. Um, I ended up having to take my pickup truck and my ATV trailer, meeting the, the trucking company have them lift gate it down from their semi trailer down to my ATV trailer. And I had to pretty much hog tie this thing in the back of my trailer. It was, it was a nightmare. And of course, these do not ride well at all in the back of a trailer because of the weight. And they're so tall. Okay. Well, I got to my house and you think, well, that's the end of it. That's not the end of it. There's a reason why I paid for a lift gate service. Now, I had to get this thing out of my trailer. I ended up having to borrow a tractor from one of my friends, put a set of forks on it, and literally drive the tractor into my garage, and then I had to back the trailer into it and use the tractor to lift this off the trailer onto the floor. Now, keep in mind, they'd also put an extra large pallet on here for this for some apparent reason. So we had to take it off that pallet. I had to build a new pallet and then I had to, well, then this had to come off of the junk pallet that they sent it on and put it on the heavy duty one that you just saw. I'm going to tell you what, this has been an absolute nightmare. I'm not telling you 
not to order this from Northern Tool, but I just want to let you know, my experience was extremely horrible. Then I got to the house, well actually, I asked the truck driver where my other package was, and that was the box of oil I showed you. Uh, Northern Tool had not sent my oil yet, which was really nice. You send an air compressor needing oil, and people fall for that, and they can turn the air compressor up and lock it up. That's brilliant. So anyways, I ended up having to wait extra time for my oil to be Federal Express to the house. I had to make another phone call to them on top of that. You know, I ended up getting the air compressor on Monday. And when I talked to them again, they said that the oil should be at my house by Friday. Well, today's Friday. So this has been an absolute, absolute nightmare. So I just want to let you know my experience on this. I'm glad I got the air compressor, but this was supposed to be pretty well painless. And I'm going to tell you what, this air compressor is so heavy. I mean, one person, this, this is hard to actually move. I had my son actually help me with this. And uh, it's you're going to want some help if you order this or even a larger one. But... Uh, Anyways, let's go ahead and move on from this because I'm tired of thinking about this because I'll tell you, it, it pretty well made me mad. So, oh, wait a minute. Actually, I want to tell you about the last part of this. So they told me that uh, finally, if I wanted to get a, a different truck to come and deliver this to my house, that I would have to pay just under $500 on the shipping from this other trucking company. And it wasn't contracted from this trucking company. It was still contracted through Northern Tool because they found a company to lift gate it to my house. So my free shipping ended up turning into just under $500 on that. And I told the person on the phone, that's when I got mad. That's when I told the person on the phone that they had no idea what they were doing and I was not very happy about it and I told them they need to find a new line of work because they are horrible at what they do and that is the God's honest truth so let's go ahead and move on from this one <laughs> so I was going to show you how to hook the electrical up on this but then I decided that I probably should not and I'm gonna tell you why if you're hooking up like a regular outlet in a house that's a lower voltage you'll get shocked yes but it's not gonna kill you most likely if you do something wrong with the power the voltage that's actually going through this you could be put in the hospital or even killed so I know what I'm doing, but I don't know if you guys know what you're doing. And alternate current, AC current, is not something to play around with when you get into a little bit higher voltage. Um, so what I'm going to tell everyone to do is make sure you have somebody hook up your air compressor that does know what they're doing. And... If you have nobody that knows what they're doing, go to an electrical store and have them actually give you a name of somebody that can come to your house and hook this up. I just don't want to be responsible for somebody hooking this up and for some odd reason they end up getting shocked. Something's not grounded right. Their house burns down. The, the scenarios are just endless, okay? So, I am not going to show you that. But what I will show you is what I actually bought to actually hook up on this. So, the way I'm going to do this is like a pigtail style. Somewhat like what you would find on a washer or dryer, okay? Now, the reason why my wiring is going to be as heavy as it actually is 
is because where my breaker box is, is on the opposite side of my house from where my garage is. And I'm going to be running a very long distance. Okay. So the wire that I actually have for the pigtail that I'm actually going to use to plug into where my uh, welder is for right now until I get the wiring ran through my house is this right here is a 6.3 with a ground. Now, I'm not going to use one of the wires in there, so it's going to be the same difference as 6.2 with a ground. Okay? And this right here is the plug that I'm going to use, which is a heavy duty plug. And it's going to look just like this right here. Now, the coating on this wire is like extremely thick, so it's going to be really good to use for a long period of time. I know it. Anyone else that does electrical work, they will know it. This is a complete overkill for the power supply. But running from one distance or longer distance, you actually need to have heavier duty wire. Do you need this heavy duty for this application? No, you don't. But the reason why I am doing this is eventually this air compressor will will die. Hopefully later. And, you know, years later on, I don't want to tear out the wiring in the walls just because I decided to get a bigger air compressor, for example. I may get one that requires the higher voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and put the wiring through the house. Now, while well, I'm also, you know, doing renovations on the bottom of my house anyways. So, it's just kind of planning ahead. But I am sorry that I'm not going to show how to actually wire this in. I just, like I said, I just don't want someone to end up messing this up and getting killed. Or their house catches on fire two days later or, you know, anything else happens. So, we'll come back and we'll start putting oil in this after I hook it all up, okay? Okay, so it's the next day. I ended up having to run into town to get some connectors that I thought I had and I didn't. So, I went ahead and got the wiring finished up on it. And I moved ahead and I was going to tell you what the break-in period is on this. But I looked in the manual. <clears throat> and I looked it up at the Ingersoll Rand website. And apparently, there is no break-in period on these anymore because they break them in at the factory. So, we don't have to do that. So, what we're going to do is, we're I'm going to show you what is inside the startup kit. And then we're just going to dump the oil in there. And we're done. Okay, so... This is what you're getting when you get the startup kit. And it even says right here, it will extend your warranty. So let's go ahead and open this up and I'll show you what's inside here. Which I have no idea what's even in here myself. I haven't even looked yet. Okay. So it looks like we have one, two quarts of oil, uh, instructions, I guess, and I'm guessing this right here is the air filter. Yes. So we get two of these air filters. Here's the other one. That's pretty much the whole entire kit. Okay, so before we start on the oil, I do want to show you this. This is the air filter. The housing, anyways. And it is held on by a wing nut. Okay? Okay. When you get this air compressor, 
it comes uh, with a uh, air filter that's stuck in there as you can see but it does come with one so you do not need to purchase any other additional ones but I thought I'd just show you that And it is pretty simple to install. So being that your air compressor came with an air filter, the kit that you actually get if you buy this will have two quarts of oil and two air filters in it. So that means you have three air filters. There should not be a reason for you to have to buy an air filter for many, many years. Okay? Because these right here, you can just take the air compressor and just blow it out. When it gets to the point, that's when you replace it. So let's go ahead and do the oil. Now, I also could not find anything that showed how much oil this actually held. So I guess we're going to figure it out. Now, this is just plastic. You can use like an adjustable wrench or like I showed you, a flat screwdriver. Okay, so make sure you get a funnel and you clean it out before you use it. Now, I went ahead and removed it, but I want to tell you, you see this foil up here? This quart of oil comes with foil. Make sure you remove the, the foil and pull it off there. You do not need foil going into your uh, air compressor. Now, before I pour it in, this is actually an eye. And this right here will show you how much oil you are. Once we get up to about the halfway level, then I'll zoom in and show you what it looks like. This stuff is clear, too. It looks like really thick water. This is actually taking quite a bit of oil. There it goes. Okay, so we are at three quarters of a quart right now. So let me go ahead and show you what the fill glass looks like. Okay, so this is what the fill glass actually looks like. I got a flashlight up to it. And as you can see, it's just barely over halfway full so basically what we're going to do is we're going to fill this up until we saw we see a very very small bubble on the very top of this glass and the reason why we're leaving a very very small bubble is we don't want to overfill the, the air compressor so let's go ahead and start filling back in there again Okay, so let's go ahead and finish topping it off here. I just got the flashlight up here so I can see. A little bit better. Okay, so it is actually, there is just a faint little bubble there. Actually, it's just starting to disappear, the bubble. So, anyways, we made it all the way down here to the last line. So, it's like there's about 100 milliliters left in here, or 4 ounces. About 4 ounces left in the bottle right now. So you're going to use almost an entire bottle of this. So you make sure you save this oil because you will be using it later. But uh, make sure that when you have the air compressor running, that, uh, you know, at least once a week anyways, 
I would come over, check the eyeglass, make sure it's not blowing any oil or anything like that. Check your filter, make sure there's no oil in your filter. That way, sometimes oil can be shot back up through and out the, the air filter. If it does that, you've either got it overfilled or you have a broken ring on your piston. If the piston is set up like that. There are different setups on a piston and ring setup. So let's go ahead and pull the funnel out. And we are going to go ahead and put the drain or put the uh, fill plug back in. wipe that off a little bit now right here's the drain plug oh right here's the fill plug sorry and down here is a little square one that is actually your drain plug now when I looked everything up I saw nothing showing how often that you should actually change the oil on this air compressor which really surprised me um, so what I'm actually going to go by is about every six months, I'm actually going to change this. So twice a year. Now, if you're buying an air compressor and you're going to have it in a place where there's a lot of moisture, okay, you're going to want to keep an eye on this sight glass. If that sight glass, if your oil starts looking milky or anything like that, you need to start changing your oil more frequently. Because what's happening is it's actually sucking in all that moisture. Um, next thing is you want to make sure that you drain your air tank quite often. Because you can get air or you can get moisture coming in and out and everything. It'll rot your tanks out. But uh, anyways, I think we're pretty well ready to start this thing up. So let's go ahead and, ahead and uh, do that. Okay, so are you all ready to hear how loud this thing's going to be? Let's go ahead and fire it up for the first time. There we go. Now I'm not going. I'm actually going to release the air on this because I got to finish out the plumbing for the airline. I don't know if you can see that, but there's already moisture coming out. So that's where it was actually, you know, shipped and everything. But, uh, yeah, right here is some water, if you can see that. So, uh, first thing I'm going to have to do before I can actually use the air lines or anything like that, I'm going to have to air it up and bleed out the tank, which is pretty simple. There's just a drain screw on the very bottom. And uh, that'll let everything drip out. So, when you're not actually using the air compressor, and a lot of people don't realize this, but when you're actually not using the air compressor, the drain plug on the very bottom of the tank, you should open that up. That way it gives a chance for the air tank to actually drain and well, just stay dry. Hey everybody, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you like my new air compressor. I hope this video has actually helped you and I uh, hope you've learned something on this. I hope this video has helped you pick out your next compressor. You may not need one this large. Then again, you may need one a little bit bigger. 
depending on what your needs are for. This one puts out 18.1 CFM. This will be plenty for what I'm using it for. And that would be for my uh, semi truck, taking tires on and off and you know whatnot. Now, if you watched my last video, you'll see my new smaller air compressor. That air compressor is gonna be for everything else. This one here is gonna be for my larger jobs. So I'm gonna leave you with that, but you all have a great day and come back, okay? See ya.